What is up, Autograph Nation? TTM Troy here from TTMAutograph.com. And this is a first. You know, for years people have been saying, Troy, why don't you do one of those how-to videos on how to collect autographs through the mail? And I was like, well, you know, a lot of people have done that, and I, I, I try to be different than everybody else. And now that I've actually written a book, and we could talk about that after the video, but I was like, you know, I really should do that. And so I wanted to thank you for watching this video. If you are watching this video, you are one of the many people interested in how to collect autographs through the mail, or as we call it, TTM. Now, there are a ton of different acronyms, and I'm going to be doing videos about acronyms and all this other stuff some other time. <laughs> Little tease there for you. So in this video, I just wanna get started and I wanna show you guys how to get started collecting autographs through the mail. And it doesn't mean that you have to set up a camera and start doing these mail day videos, although that would be awesome. But all you need is something to send, a few envelopes, some stamps, a pen, some paper, and you too can try to get your favorite celebrity or sports figures autographs through the mail. And this is a video that's gonna show you how I do it. And hopefully, hopefully by following these items and following this checklist that you too could have that giant mail day. So let's get started. The first thing you have to figure out when you're starting to do autographs through the mail is what the heck am I gonna have autographed? In this video, we're gonna be talking about Mr. Brad Keller from the Kansas City Royals. So we're gonna be concentrating on trading cards. This is probably the most popular thing to send out for autographs through the mail. You could send out other things. Some people have sent cooking spoons to chefs, playing cards, baseball jerseys, four by six or eight by 10 photos, even a red stapler. But we're gonna go back to the baseball card. When you are deciding what to send, it is really, really important that you remember one thing when you collect autographs through the mail. You may never see your item again. Yes, it could either get lost in the mail, or if the person doesn't want to sign, they'll just throw it away. So never, ever, ever send something that you would completely hate never to see again. Cool? All right, so let's go back to Mr. Brad Keller. This is a 2019 Topps card, a rookie card for, like I said, <laughs> Brad Keller of the Kansas City Royals. We're going to write Brad Keller a fantastic letter of request, but now that we have the card, we need some other supplies too. Let's go over some of the typical supplies when requesting an autographed trading card through the mail. First, you need two envelopes. Here I've used two different size envelopes, but if you only have one of the regular size, that's completely fine too. If you handwrite your letter, you'll also need paper and a pen or pencil to write your letter with. Well, that's about it. Oh, how about stamps? Yeah, I forgot those and had to actually just go to the post office. Oops. Yes, you'll need some stamps. Well, that's about all you need to get started in collecting autographs through the mail. So let's go through the process a little bit. One of the first things I do when I want to request an autograph through the mail is find that person's address. Now, there are several free ways to do that. So the first free way is just to Google. As you can see, this is a Brad Keller Kansas City Royals card. So I'm just going to go to Google and I'm going to look up Kansas City Royals home stadium. You can also find that from their official website. This method works with current players in any sport that you may have. But if you are looking for a retired player, where are you going to find that address? Well, you could go back to Google, which sometimes will find it, but here are the best places to find retired players and even celebrities addresses. Fanmail.biz this is a free resource where people can post their successes and addresses and just kind of be part of a community. Everything on their site is free, but sometimes they don't have the most updated information. The best place that I've found to get addresses for celebrities and players is StarTiger.com. StarTiger lets you put your successes into the database so you can see how many days, 
or months or sometimes even years it took to get a request back. And they also have addresses that are marked valid, invalid, or other little notations that are around just to show you how active that person is signing autographs. Star Tiger is by far the best place that I have found to get addresses. Another great resource that also charges a subscription fee is sportscollectors.net. I'm a member of both Sports Collectors and Star Tiger. They are both tremendous resources, and either one of those will help you get the address you want. In our case, with Mr. Keller, it's pretty easy to get the Royals home stadium, so we're just going to use that. So let's go to our checklist. We have something to send. We know where we're going to send it. And now we're going to write our letter. It seems like everybody has an opinion whether you should handwrite or if you can type your letter. Now, I'm going to tell you that I have been doing TTMs for so long, and 99.9% .9 of the time, I use a typed letter. I even have kind of a form letter I use sometimes. Okay, most of the time. Hmm. A lot of times, the celebrity won't even read your letter, but if they do, you want it to be good. So there are certain things that you want to make sure that you have in your letter. Let's check it out. In this case, I'm going to hand write my letter. So what I've done is I've gotten a slightly smaller piece of paper. Now, the reason why I use a smaller piece of paper is because if I use a normal notebook paper, it may not look like I've written that much. And maybe that matters, maybe it doesn't, but I want to fill up the, well, most of the page. So I actually get smaller sized notebooks when I want to write my letter. And that way it fills up eh, just a little bit more room and looks a little bit more full. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually put the date at the top of my letter. Okay. Now, the next section, I am actually going to put my name again. So what I do is I put my name and address and then I put their name and address directly below that. That way, if an envelope gets lost, then maybe they'll use their own and, and still return it, but this will actually help you in the long run. So just like a normal letter might be that you, you mail your grandma or something, uh, be sure to put your reply address or your return address on your letter. Okay, next you want to say, Dear Whoever. I always use Mr. and Mrs. and their last name. So what I'm going to do here is Dear Mr. Keller with a comma. Okay, we're trying to be a little bit friendly, so I'm going to be very informal with my letter. Next is your introductory paragraph. So open your letter with saying something like, Hello, hope you are having a great season so far. Now, you might want to do some research on your player to see if they're actually having a good season so far, but you could probably be safe with just saying, hello, dear Mr. Whatever, and thank you for taking the time to read my letter. Okay, sounds good. So your introductory paragraph should tell a little about yourself. So tell a little bit about why you're writing them and that you're a baseball fan, that you grew up in Kansas City, that your Little League team was the Royals when you were in Little League, and, you know, last year you got five home runs, and, you know, just introduce yourself to the celebrity or the sports figure. Now, do not lie. This is a big thing. Do not lie in your letter of request. There are a lot of stories out there where lying on your letter of request has gotten people in trouble. There's one famous story that uh, my friend Zayden Savage talks about where someone wrote about their, their kid being sick or they wrote that they were a kid that was sick and one of the players actually showed up at this person's house expecting to surprise a, a dying child and instead it was an adult and at that point they had to come clean, obviously. So... Do not lie in your letter at all. No matter what you do, do not lie. Do not say you are uh, having a hard time and 
surgeries unless you have had surgeries and are having a hard time. So please be truthful in your letter. Okay, let's go on. So your next paragraph is say something complimentary to the player. And if they're brand new, obviously you have to kind of uh, say something generic. So tell them uh, that you saw one of their games last year when they got the triple and the next person str struck out and that was the end of the game and that really crushed your your uh, spirits and you really hope that that doesn't happen this year and you know whatever you want just say a little bit about the person that you're writing so the next paragraph is your ask and this is where you want to be really really clear what you are asking them to do you can say hey I bought some baseball cards the other day, and I was thrilled to get one of my favorite teams in them, you. Would you please sign it for me? It would really mean a lot to me, and I would keep it for my own personal collection. There you go. Uh, <laughs> that is actually very important to do. Say what you want, and if you include more than one card of the person, it probably might be a good idea to say, I've included another card of yours as well. Please keep it for your collection if you don't want to sign two, whatever. So you could put that in there, and that way you may get both back or you may get only one back. We have our letter written. You can kind of see that here. And then you just kind of want to close. And so what I usually say is something along the lines of, thank you for your time. That's very important. Thank them for their time and hope you have a great season. And then you want to say your sign-off, which is usually, I use best, but you could use whatever you want, and sign your name. That is your letter of request. So what did we have here? We're, we're going to kind of pick this letter apart now that we have it all here. So we have the date, right? We have your address somewhere on there, okay? Even if it's on your return envelope, put it on your letter. Then you have their address. That's important too. Then you have your opening, dear so-and-so. In this case, dear Mr. Keller. Then you have your opening paragraph where you talk a little bit about yourself. Then you talk a little bit about the player. Then you make your ask. And then you do your sign-off and sign your letter. That is about it for the letter of request. Now, like I said, whether you type it or... <laughs> Uh, handwrite it like we've done here in this video. That is all you need to do. Whether you do one or the other, it's okay. Now, if you want to debate handwritten <laughs> versus typed, I'm going to be doing a video about that at some point too. So be look out for that because I'm sure I might even do a, a panel discussion on that because there are so many people who only handwrite and some people that only type. I, like I said, I've been one that only types. So there you go. That is what we call the letter of request, or L-O-R, as you sometimes hear, okay? Now that we have our letter of request, what's the next thing we need to do? We need to address the envelopes. Oh, and put the stamp on it, right? Okay. <laughs> so let's get our envelopes out. Now, what I always use is a number 10, which is a standard business size envelope. That is going to be the envelope that you address to the player, okay? And then I actually use a, it's called a number six and three quarters envelope. <laughs> and that's a smaller envelope that will fit exactly inside of the number 10 envelope. Pretty cool, huh? And the reason why I use these is if you only have the number 10s and fold the envelope, you have to fold it pretty good to get it to fit inside of itself or another number 10 envelope, right? So when you put your card in there, it kind of can put some stress on the card when it comes back because your envelope will have a crease in it. And that could lead it to naturally kind of fold over. And so in the sorting mechanisms at the post office, it might actually bend your card and you don't want that. So I get these six and three quarter envelopes. You can get them pretty much anywhere. Uh, including Walmart, Staples, Sam's Club, you know, stuff like that. Now, this is a little tip, and some people, sometimes I follow this and sometimes I don't, but I try to get the easy peel 
envelopes, definitely for the return envelope, because picture your favorite celebrity sitting there uh, at their house just licking your envelopes. You know, you're you're not sending for their DNA, or you, you shouldn't be. <laughs> if you don't, some celebrities may actually not sign because they don't want to even deal with it. So definitely use the Petal and Seal or Easy Seal envelopes for your return. And it doesn't really ma matter for your send because you're the one who's going to be licking all those. But you can find both of those at the store. Uh, if you get 500 count boxes, you can get them at Sam's Club, and it's a lot cheaper. So just a little tip there. Or Costco probably has them as well. Uh, I don't have a Costco here, so I get them at uh, Sam's Club. So... I yeah, you might want to get the 500 count box uh, when you start out. Now that you have your envelopes, it's time to address them and put the stamps on them. Okay, so on the small envelope, which is going to be your return envelope, you want to put your address in the middle of the envelope. Okay, this is where your address goes. Now you could use labels, you could handwrite. It's completely up to you. I tried to use, or I tend to use labels on mine, but in this case, I'm doing a handwritten one just to uh, show you. <laughs> okay, and then once you have that on there, go ahead and stick your stamp up in the corner. Now, this video was made primarily for U.S. viewers and, and collectors, so I'm using a forever stamp that was printed at the kiosk. Now, you can get all sorts of different stamps at the store. Uh, you can even print them at home legally if you subscribe to like stamps.com but on your return as long as you're sending and receiving uh probably about three or four usually about four you're okay with only using one stamp so we're going to put that stamp on there now this is technically all you need you could put another return address up at the top you could put the players or celebrities return address i always just leave it blank or i'll write my address up there again. That's just what I do. Uh, you're free to do whatever you want there. Okay, so put that aside for now. Got it. <laughs> awesome. So now we're going to address the one for the player. So in the upper left-hand corner of your other envelope, this is where you want to put your address again, this time in the upper left, because if you get a return to sender or they send your, well, yeah, return to sender, which happens a lot, <laughs> this is where it will come back to. So you want to put your address in the upper left, and you want to put the player or celebrity's address in the middle of the envelope. This is where it's going to be going. Got it? Now, put your stamp on this envelope, and you're pretty much done. Now, an optional step that you can do is you can actually write on the envelopes, uh, do not bend on both the back and the front. You know, I have been doing this a long time, and I don't put Do Not Bend on mine anymore, but I do have a stamper that I could stamp <laughs> if I wanted to. But, you know, it's a completely up to you. If you want to, if you sleep better knowing that you put Do Not Bend on it, go ahead and do that, okay? I'm going to stamp mine right now with a my little stamper, and there you go. So I do that to both of them, okay? Now comes the fun part. So... If you are using a six and three quarter envelope, like I am, and a number 10 envelope on the outside, now is the time to stuff your envelope. And, you know, people think that this is a easy thing. Like, of course, you have to put the stuff in the envelope. But I have found the perfect way to put stuff in your envelopes, okay? So here is what I do. First, we're gonna turn the envelope over, okay? Now, here is your number 10 envelope. So the flap, we're going to open the flap and we're actually going to put the six and three quarter envelope in upside down with the flap toward the bottom. Okay. Upside down with a flap on the bottom facing you. Okay. So what this lets us do is we're going to fold our letter to get it to fit. Right. And then what we're going to actually do here is we're going to nestle the card or cards inside the six and three quarter flap. So they're not actually in the envelope, but they're 
in the flap upside down. So the flap is going to hold them. Okay. And what this does here is it gives some extra pr protection to the front of the cards because you have the extra envelope doing it right in front of it. And then we're going to put our letter on the other side, which is the back side now, uh, to protect the back. So your cards are sandwiched between the small envelope, which is inside the big envelope, and your letter. Okay? So they are pretty well protected. Got it? And then you could just seal your envelope. There you go. And that is pretty much all. All there is basically to sending a TTM. So anyway, guys, that is how I collect autographs through the mail. I've been doing that since what 2000? No, before that, way back into the 90s, actually. I've been doing YouTube since 2012, but I've been collecting autographs for a lot longer than that. So if you want some more in-depth tips, I definitely want you to check out my book. It's called Autograph Collecting Secrets. You can find it on uh, Books a Million, on Goodreads, on Amazon, which is the best place to find it, uh, Barnes & Noble. You can get either your Kindle version, you get the paperback version, or if you want to listen to me talk, <laughs> you could actually get an Audible version on audible.com. How cool is that? So... Right now, I want to invite you to join my email list because I am going to be doing some incredible newsletters for you, letting me you know who has signed recently and just some tips, tricks, and also just uh, some spotlights of other YouTubers and what people are getting in. So you'll want to check out that link down below in the subscription and you might even get something for free <laughs> when you check that out. So thank you so much. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and definitely hit that subscribe button down below if it is not lit up, okay? Because you do that, you'll get all my videos and you'll be able to see those right when you come back to YouTube. And that would be great to see you here every single time I do a video. And that would be awesome. You can also leave comments down there, so be sure to do that. Talk to you later, guys. And remember, may your mailboxes be full and your stamps forever. Thank you. Bye-bye.